Last time when we did this, it was a battle between AC Milan and Inter. You saw the teams that we had built and you saw that AC Milan won that battle. Today, you guys have been asking for a different rebuild battle, the biggest of them all. It is Barcelona and Real Madrid. This team against the Barcelona side you just saw. We're going to go after 10 trophies. Whoever wins 10 at first major trophies, which means the Spanish Cup, the uh, Spanish League title, and of course the European trophies that you can win, whether it be Conference League, Europa League, or Champions League, obviously. All those count. And on top of it, the Super Cup, the European Super Cup count as well. So when we look back at the history of Barcelona and Real Madrid, you have seen unbelievable players coming through. On the Barcelona side, you had the likes of Ronaldinho, Xavi, Iniesta, Thierry Henry, Eto, so many beasts. And on the Real Madrid side, of course, the Galacticos with the likes of Ronaldo, Figo, Beckham, and all those lads. Today, though, it's a different battle. So let's start it right now with the first season. First transfers, I should say. Barcelona. Look, lads, in these rebuilds, we're not necessarily looking for realism. We're looking for fun. And that's what I'm going for. Ferran Torres, 70 million sold. Gundogan, 70 million. Lewandowski, 70 million. Best has left for 35.3. Martinez for 22.5. Roberto for 15.5. Alonso and Balde out on loan to return after Cancelo, his loan expires. This is going to be a mad one. And here's the catch. Take a look at the transfer budget. 522 million. Obviously, Barcelona is not as strong as Real Madrid right now. So we need all the money we can get, all the deals we can get over the line. It was necessary to make these upcoming transfers possible. This is going to be insane. Watch. I sold Ferran Torres for 70 million and signed Nico Williams, the Spanish left wing who's doing incredible during the Euros right now for 80 million. And that's not the only transfer I'm going to make, obviously. But the first one to join Barcelona to be able to battle it out with the likes of Real Madrid. We need a transfer like this. He comes in with an 83 rating, which is obviously impressive. Lots of pace, skill moves, weak foot, lots of play styles. Oh boy, that midfield, by the way, it's a solid one. It's one for years to come. I'm not going to touch the midfield. I believe I'm going to leave it like this. Cancelo is going to be here at first. And obviously, obviously, because Lamine Yamal is not in the game, I've decided to keep the squads as they are in the game right now. Because otherwise, if Yamal was here, I would have probably kept him in the squad and then added Mbappe to Real Madrid to have it kind of like a fair uh, battle there. So because Yamal isn't there, Mbappe also isn't going to be at Real Madrid yet in this video, but I can buy him. So uh, yeah, Nico Williams down that left hand side. First, a big signing. More to come. If only Barcelona had the type of money I have right now. With their financial struggles, obviously they don't. But in my opinion, Alexander Isak would look insane in this team. He would be ideal. If I could legitimately choose one or two strikers for Barcelona right now, he would be right up there for me. I'm so impressed by him and I, I still feel like a lot of people kind of underestimate Alexander Isak. But the combination of Isak and Williams coming into this team in the attack it would be ridiculous. This guy's so good. And obviously because he reminds me so much of Thierry Henry. And because Thierry Henry obviously played for Barcelona. This just made so much sense to me. Isak, five-star weak foot striker with four-star skills and a bunch of play styles. Yeah, Barcelona is getting stronger. Beware Real Madrid. As much as Barcelona does have a great midfield, I actually decided to upgrade in one position. I did let go of Gundogan with that. We left a lot of age after the squad. So I wanted to bring in someone with a bit more experience and someone I think who would fit in perfectly into this play style of Barcelona. It is, of course, Bernardo Silva. Joining us now for 120 million, which is an insane amount of money. But he's going to be here and taking over that right center midfield position for us. I truly believe he's going to have amazing numbers by the end of the season. But generally speaking, that was another area where I felt like I could make a massive upgrade. I was looking at Rafinha too, but I personally really like Rafinha. So I'm going to keep him in the squad. And then in the middle... Christensen, I appreciate what you do, but I still have a bunch of cash left. And there it is, the new centre-back of Barcelona. We're looking for players who can play good passes 
forward. Someone that loves to get involved in the attack as well. Nico Schlotterbeck is a beast. And I loved the fact that he got to play in the last game for Germany. I personally think he's much better than Jonathan Ta. Yes, there I said it. I think Jonathan Ta has profited massively from an incredible Shabby Alonso team. And his name has gone up levels on the market. But for me, Nico Schlotterbeck is a much better player. So he comes in now as a left-footed centre-back into this team. Someone that can support this team during the build-up and obviously defend quite well. And it's quite strong in the air, actually. Uh, he's six foot three. So that's, that is the Barcelona side that will take on the season. Now we will have to focus on Real Madrid but of course as we move forward this bench needs improving that is ridiculously bad and that is going to be something that we have to focus on as we go into the upcoming seasons but for now Real Madrid what are you having in uh in store for us do I have some news for you take a look at this we are going and throwing out all the old at Real Madrid if Barcelona can do a whole revamp we can do it too we are selling Rudiger for 68.4, Tony Kroos 49.9, Alaba 46.6, Carvajal leaves as well, Bella Mendy leaves the squad, Modric has sadly left, Vasquez is gone and Fernandez is gone too, leaving us with a budget of 588 million and this squad. You can quite clearly tell which positions we need to go after. A new striker. A new right back, a centre back, and a left back. You know exactly who is joining first. Yep, it's him. Well, Barcelona, you couldn't get Yamal into your team. I get it. But at least I had to pay 230 million to get Mbappe to make things somewhat fair right here. But obviously, this man is going to be joining Ancelotti next year. And honestly, man, just the thought of it makes me sick. Their team is too strong. He joins them as a 91 rated player. If this is going to be their front four in the upcoming season, who's going to stop this? Like, honestly, that left hand side with Vinny and then Mbappe in the middle and Jude behind it. They will probably play most of the time over the left, I would assume. But still, even Rodrigo, this guy is world class too. Like, how do you stop this? But Mbappe is now here. He's part of this project. So Barca, just because you made a couple of signings doesn't mean this team doesn't get stronger too. Initially, it was Agent Hendo and Trent trying to get Jude to Liverpool. But now Agent Jude has done his job and Trent is joining Real Madrid. I could honestly see this happen one day. It sickens me to say it, but I can genuinely see this happen one day. I would hate to see Trent leave Liverpool at any point throughout his career. But if he ever does, I think Real Madrid is the only team to replace the likes of Cavajal in the future. He comes in now at the sweet age of 24 and a long career ahead to join Jude and this ridiculous squad. <laughs> Like, this is pain. I really hope this doesn't happen. Apparently, Bayern Munich are looking to sell this man, which drives me nuts because every time he plays, he has been insane. But Matthijs De Ligt is going to be the one that we sign as the new centre-back at Real Madrid. He would look very good in that kit. And he joins us for about 75 million, completing the first transfer window for Real Madrid. Oh, actually, no. I'm still looking for a left back. I'll fix that in just a second. But after all these signings, how much money do I even have left? I have about how much? Let's see. We have 152. And as you can tell, that man right there is going to be the left back. So, Josko Guardiol, welcome, buddy. I have been a huge fan of Guardiol for a long time. Obviously, at Leipzig, he has been incredible. Before that, at Zagreb, he was a beast. And uh, now he's going to join Real Madrid as a left back who is obviously quite tall and strong and great at defending and also at pushing the ball forward into our opponent's half. So with that being said, the new Real Madrid is set up and it looks insane. Of course it does. It is so freaking good. The first season with Real Madrid is done and I am not seeing a Champions League final. What the hell happened there then? Let's take a look at the squad. It is obviously world class, maybe more than world class to be fair. And we're going to be looking at their performance third in the league. Huh? 
Real Madrid, third in the league, Copa de España, lost in the final against Barcelona, Champions League, nowhere to be seen. Real Madrid drops out of the first season with no trophies, despite probably a much better team than Barcelona. How the hell did this happen? Now, when it comes to the stats, lads, we will keep track of the top scorer from each team every season. This time around, it is Kylian Mbappe for Real Madrid with 34 goals. Remember that number. Now, in the last rebuild battle, it was the amount of money you get through the top scorer's performance. So if Real Madrid has the better one, usually it was the, that way that they would get another 50 million in the next year's transfer budget. But because these teams are so ridiculous and money doesn't really play a role, I thought instead of giving them 50 million for doing well, they will get the ability to downgrade one of their opponent's players by minus five. And that is going to be everyone except the striker, because that way we can keep the strikers battling it out and the rest of the team, someone will drop by minus five. So Real Madrid has 34 goals and zero trophies to show. Barcelona, this might be your chance. The season over here at Barcelona is over too. And as you can tell, they're not part of the Champions League final, not even the semi-finals. This team dropped out in the quarters against Leipzig. Not a good sign, but in the league, this squad has won the first title. Barcelona, 99 points, 17 ahead of Real Madrid in this save, which is obviously impressive. And in the Copa de España, we are looking at a team that has won it on penalties, which makes it 2-0 to Barcelona. And on top of it, if Alexander Isak or anyone else can step up, and score more goals than 34? No one can. Okay, so Real Madrid wins that battle. The question is, who are we going to be weakening the most? Now, I've seen that Rafinha has scored the most goals for Barcelona. But probably the best thing to do would be to downgrade one of the highest rated players in the team. And you know what? I'm going for it. I'm going to do it where it hurts the most. The defense wins you championships. It is going to be Araujo dropping to an 84 rating as we go into the next season due to Mbappe's performance. Congratulations, Real Madrid. At least you took something out of this season. Back at Real Madrid now to go through the season. I'm going for a transfer, lads. I'm going for Santi Jimenez in this case because... I need a backup striker to Kylian Mbappe. He can't be the only one. If he gets injured, who takes over? That's a big question. And there comes Santi Jimenez from Feyenoord. We're going to try and improve this Real Madrid team even more because even though they did manage to take minus five on top, not, not take, give minus five to Araujo, they need to win trophies. That's what's going to win this video. So, Santi coming in, back up to Mbappe. I love it. Right now, I'm watching the game between Netherlands and Romania. It's a fun one so far, 14 minutes in. But lads, I'm bringing in Jareth Branthwaite into this squad because I need a backup for that defense. Branthwaite, obviously a quality player. 45 million on this lad. And he walks straight onto the bench, improving this squad even more with his 80 rating. I feel like this bench is good enough now. Let's move on to the end of the season. Real Madrid surprising me. And Hakpo, by the way, just scored a ridiculous goal. Amazing stuff, Hakpo. Keep it up. Now we are looking at Real Madrid at the top of La Liga, which finally makes it their first trophy. Obviously, we'll be going over to Barcelona, making transfers and finish off the, uh, finishing off the second season as well. But this is impressive stuff. So let's see in Copa de España. Oh, no, we did not win that. Let's move over to the Champions League. Nope, we did not win that either. We got kicked out somewhere early on, and that is not good enough. It was the quarters against Atletico Madrid on penalties once more. So, lads, we really need to step it up here with Real Madrid. I don't know what else to do. I have an insane team with a really good bench. But now, a number that matters. 37. Oh, that's going to be very hard to beat. Can anyone compete with a 95 rated Kylian Mbappe? He might be the only reason why Real Madrid stay in this race, but they have now picked up one trophy and 37 goals. Let's see what Barca does. There he is, Bradley Barcola. He's joining Barcelona as the first new signing over here, lads. Let's see how this one goes. 
Barcola, obviously a very talented player from PSG. He joins us. PSG picked up Dembele, as you guys know. So this is a very, very important lad joining us because we do need players for the wings. So Barcola joining in is the ideal solution for us. He can play left wing or right wing and compete with Rafinha. Hence why I wanted him to be part of this squad. But yeah, looking at this team, I feel like we do need a couple of defensive reinforcements. Actually, yeah. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. We'll see. Actually, no. There we go. That is how we're going to set it up. Longle, Garcia, Araujo, Gavi, Fati, Barcola, Vitor Roque. That's pretty good. And this team has already been winning trophies, so let's go to the end of the season. Oh, and of course, let's not forget this. We're bringing back Mr. Balde into the team as the left back now that Cancelo is gone. Netherlands is dominating this game, and so is Barcelona. Lads, they are in the Champions League final. And they played against Real Madrid in the semifinals and beat them. So uh, even though they might be lower rated, they are currently the stronger team. Their performances have been outstanding. And this is the moment. Can they win the Champions League? The first one to do it. It is Barcelona winning it with Bernardo Silva scoring the only goal against Manchester City. That now makes it three trophies for Barcelona seven to go let's see if they were able to win a couple more here in the standings we'll be able to see they bottled it against real madrid real madrid is helping itself right here in this title race by taking that away from barca in the copa de españa we are looking at real madrid at the top again impressive so barcelona only picks up one trophy in the second season pushing their number up to three and we have real madrid up at one so now the moment of truth stats wise ooh, isaac got close but not close enough that is him on 34 goals which makes it that mbappe wins the battle again araujo by the way from an 84 back up to an 88 respect i think for the next big hit on this team we have to go pedri pedri Buddy, you're going to go from a 92 to an 87 because Mbappe keeps beating you, lads. Look, what Barca is doing is very impressive. With a lower rated team, they are winning them trophies. And now we need to make a switch. Kvaraskelia is joining Real Madrid. He apparently is a massive Cristiano Ronaldo fan, which is something I didn't know. And he now joins the team of Cristiano. So, Brahim Diaz, I appreciate you. Actually, no, we're going to take out Marvin here and strengthen the bench. Yes, the freaking bench of Real Madrid with a 90 rated player. Surely you guys start winning more trophies, right? Real Madrid might be on to a big season here. In Copa de España, they win the title, taking their total to, I believe, yes, it is two now. And uh, going into La Liga, we are looking at, oh, two points behind Atletico Madrid. Wow, even behind Barcelona. So no trophy there, but in the Champions League up against Borussia Dortmund. So lads, let's take on this game and see if we can get two titles for Real Madrid. And keep in mind, winning the Champions League or the Europa League is massive because it gets to play. Uh, it gets us to play the uh, Super Cup, the European Super Cup, which also counts. So Barcelona also already has that. Let's see if this team can get it done. Surely you don't lose against Lukaku, right, lads? You don't. Here it goes. A team filled with players rated 90 and above. Surely it wins on penalties. 8-7. Niklas Sule misses the eighth penalty for Borussia Dortmund. And they win it in the end. It should never be this close. So having the best and highest rated players in one team is not everything. Let's see, though, how many goals from a 96 rated Mbappe. 38. One more goal than last time around. Impressive stuff from him from sh for sure. Let's see if Barcelona can finally beat that number and see how many trophies they can get to. Real Madrid on two now. Actually, no, three. The UEFA Super Cup has been won by Barcelona, taking their total to four trophies, showcasing again how important it is to win a European trophy. And Van Dijk just hit the post with a header. But lads... We're looking at La Liga and we're seeing Barcelona win again. They are running away with this despite being the lower rated team. It is 82 points to win it all. They now have a total of five trophies, but in the Champions League, they didn't win it. Here's the catch though. 
they dropped to the Europa League and won that one. So Barcelona have won three trophies, taking their total from three to six. That's the level we're looking at right now. Real Madrid is three trophies away from this. They have to win every single trophy in the upcoming season to play a role in this battle again. Now, of course, we could get to nine trophies with Barca and stop winning anything. That's possible too. So that's why these videos are so fun for me to record. But let's dive into the squad hub and see if we were able to beat the 38 goals of Mbappe. No, we were not. 36 it is this time. And you know what? This time I'm going to take away the rating off. Oh boy, I think I'm going to hit Schlotterbeck here. 92 going down to an 87. Pedri fought his way back to an 89, but Gavi has been taking playtime away from him now that he's a 90 rated player. Schlotterbeck is going to drop to an 87 to hurt this Barcelona squad. Mbappe is doing his best. The rest of the team of Real Madrid needs to step it up. Had to make a big decision. I've signed Gregor Kobert into the Real Madrid squad because Courtois has left us 144 million. We had to pay for this man. He comes in with a rating, of course, above 90. What else did you expect at Real Madrid now? Real Madrid with a comeback? Well, maybe. So, Real Madrid wins the league title with 83 points, taking their title total to four with that. Now, in the Super Cup, they also win on penalties against Monaco, which makes it five trophies for them. In Copa de España, they win it too. So that makes it six trophies in total for Real Madrid, equaling the amount of trophies Barcelona have. Now, obviously, Barcelona hasn't played season four yet, so let's keep that in mind. But that's not it, lads. They could win another one. Another one. They could win against Leipzig right here, right now, and they could take over this title race. Are they going to do it? Real Madrid, they don't. Oh my God, Leipzig beat them with Openda, Raum and Baumgartner. So it remains six and six in the title race. But Barcelona still has the opportunity to take over in their season. This is impressive stuff. I thought they actually did it. Oh my God, there's no way anyone beats that. 51 goals. Kylian Mbappe is just holding it down. He is the reason why Barcelona keeps getting minus five overall. But now it is six trophies for both teams. For Barca, season four. Here we go. Can they get more? Well, Netherlands have scored a second thanks to an incredible Cody Gakpo. So far, he might actually be the player of the tournament. Let me know what you guys think about that. But we are looking at a side here with Barcelona who are in the Champions League final. Yes, against PSG. But if they win four trophies, it's done. La Liga, first place. That's one trophy. Then we're going to go across to Copa de España. They didn't win that. Okay, so that is just one trophy this season. Super Cup, two trophies this season. And if they win the Champions League, that's three, taking them to a total of nine. Wow, okay, now that is a bit nuts because this could come up with an interesting situation now. We will have to go into the next season. And if we win the Champions League now with Barca, I'll have to talk about something. So here we go. We're going to jump into it. They do have a strong team PSG, but our team is better, right? Right? Yes, it is. Wow. Okay, so Barcelona take themselves to nine trophies, and that's incredible. But I don't think there's a way for Real Madrid to actually win this. Because just based on timeline, the, the whole thing was whoever gets to 10 trophies first. So if Barcelona next season, early on, wins the European Super Cup, that's 10 trophies and we're done. So this Champions League trophy isn't even the most important one. Uh, Real Madrid will have no chance to retaliate. Rafinha, 38 and 9. But Mbappe, of course, getting 51. It would be, yet again, a downgrade to Barcelona's team. At this point... I'm just going to give it to Nico Williams. He's going to go down from a 94 to an 89. But I don't know if that's going to be enough to go ahead and stop Barcelona from winning the European Super Cup next season. That's the moment that decides everything. Let's get there. Again, going back to the reason why this could be the end, it is because the timeline. We are looking at a trophy in August 
And Real Madrid, until August, cannot physically win four trophies. So if Barca win this, it's done. If not, we're going back to Real Madrid to try and win everything. But lads, can Barca win it? This is the big question against Wolfsburg. With Lunin in there, former Real Madrid goalkeeper, is it meant for him to end it for Barca? It is Barca winning 3-1, getting to 10 trophies. Real Madrid with a much better team could not pull this off. The rebuild battle is finished. Alexander Isak, Nico Schlotterbeck and Pedri. And it was so much harder for Barcelona. First of all, they were the lower rated team. But most importantly, they kept getting hit by the minus five. that Mbappe kept giving this team Inaki Williams from an 89 up to a 90 straight away. But... Man, this team has done it and it is filled with 90 pluses all around for sure. The bench is a beast as well with Gavi and Bargola. This has been so much fun to record. An exciting one for sure. I thought for a second Real Madrid might be back, but they are not. Let me know in the comments down below which rebuild battle we should go for up next. This was a ton of fun to record. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day. Take care and peace. Oh. Netherlands just scored the third. It's done. Peace.